As the student, I'm going to come up with a problem formulation for the genome sequencing problem to give to Alice. Recall that the genome sequencing problem is reconstructing a genome sequence given the reads. My problem formulation would be in the form of a well-defined input and output. And as a teacher, I will guide him to reach a formulation that is understandable for Alice, and also I will make sure that he receives the output that he's actually interested in. So for my first attempt, what if I say that the input is fragments of a genome, and then the output is genome? Um, is the genome given? If not, you should mention that. Mm. So what about if the input was fragments of some unknown genome, and the output was the genome? Um, it's good to avoid the biological term. Mm. So what about if the input was strings of an unknown, uh, substrings of an unknown string S, and the output was that string S? Now Alice can output any concatenate of input strings. This is not the output that you're looking for. Mm. So now, what if the input was a set of strings and the output was a merged strings that form a genome? Do you want to impose any constraints on the output? Because right now, Alice can output nearly any string as an answer to your problem formulation. Mm -hmm. OK, so what about if the input was a set of reads and the output was to construct an overlap graph with vertices as reads and directed edges representing overlapping reads? Then we could find a Hamiltonian path in this graph, and that path would show us the genome. Problem formulation is not supposed to include the algorithm. Do not provide an algorithm in your problem formulation. So what about if the f input, the first line, is some integer n, and then the remaining n lines are uh, sequences, strings, in the ACGT alphabet that are my reads, and then the output is a string representing the genome? Problem formulation should be independent of implementation. So you should not get into the details of the format of the data representation. Mm. So what about then if I rephrase it and said that the input is just some set of n strings, and the output is a string representing the genome? What does it mean, a string representing the genome? Since Alice does not know what you mean by the phrase a string representing the genome, she can simply output a concatenate of the input strings to you. Mm. So what if now the input was a set of reads, where a read is defined as a string formed from the letters A, C, G, T, and then the output is a set of contigs, where a contig is a set of overlapping reads that together represent a contiguous region of DNA? We do not provide definitions in the input and output. And if you can shorten your problem formulation, do it. OK, so what if instead I define it before I give you the problem formulation? So my definition, I'll say beforehand, Given a set of strings, a contig is a set of overlapping input strings. And then my problem formulation would be input is a set of strings, and then output is a set of contigs. Alice can output any set of a string as a contig set, uh, given this formulation. Mm. So maybe then, instead, I'll say that the input is a sequence of strings called reads, and the output is a single string in which all substrings are a combination of reads that contain overlaps. For example, AGATT and AGAATT are combinations of AGA and ATT. Nima, no definitions and examples in the input and output. Now, also given this formulation, Alice can output nearly any string as an answer to your formulation. OK, one more try. Let's see. So what if the input is a set of strings and the output is a shortest superstring of all input strings? That's better. but. Uh, the notion of superstring has to be defined beforehand for Alice. Ah, OK. So beforehand, I'll say, given a set of strings, their superstring is a string containing all of them as substrings. And then now my formulation is, as I said before, input a set of strings, then output is a shortest superstring of all input strings. That's great. So we were able to come up with a problem formulation for the genome sequencing problem in the case of error-free reads. Can, we, can you come up with a formulation for the problem of genome sequencing for uh, error-prone error reads? Error-prone. Hmm. OK, so now if we have errors in our reads, what if we change the formulation to instead be where the input is a set of strings s and a probability error, pre, uh, a probability of error p for each position in the string? And then we could say that the output is the most probable superstring of minimal length that maximizes the overlap between the suffix and prefix of substrings. Well, Alice is lost. 
what is the probabilistic model to compute the probabilities and find out what is the most probable superstring. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to get further into the problem of finding the uh, pro problem formulation in case of error-prone reads. Uh, but to learn about that, be sure to continue with the course.